Oh. oh my gosh, what a day. What a day. You guys ever have those days where you feel like you didn't even teach, you just like redirected children to work all day long? Just like, you know. <sighs> hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day four. Day four? Day four. I'm already losing count. Today, we're gonna be talking about sanity savers for teachers in December. So in December, I'm doing a lot of clapping today. <laughs> really, I'm, I'm apologizing about all of this. I don't look great today. <laughs> it's drained me today, guys. They drained me. You ever have those days? You ever have those days where the kids just like drain you? Sanity savers for teachers in the month of December. This is gonna be one of my favorite videos that I post because it's something that I like to remember and reflect on this time of year as well. I forget about all of these things that makes your classroom run a lot smoother. In December, if you are a first year teacher, you're probably already feeling the craziness of it. I've checked in with my first year teachers on my team and asked them how they're doing because I said, if you are feeling like you are Bueller like they're tuning you out if you feel like they're not working if you feel like the good ones are you're losing the good ones That's normal. Okay, that's normal. I wanted to let them know that it's it's hard They get so excited. It's middle of the year all of it will come back in January for the most part There are just this is just something that you got it You got to deal with as a teacher is kids in December or kids around the holidays are just bonkers and it's hard because you don't want to constantly nag them and you know constantly well we got to do that again you know and there's that's that's my biggest thing is if kids don't do it right the first time we do it and try it again we do it and try it again we do it and try it again or you know shut the lights off come to the carpet have a family meeting like guys that wasn't very good let's try it again we didn't get a whole lot done sometimes even that is not good enough. Around the holidays, I have some tips that I want to give you guys that I have been doing for years and that my coworkers do. Help teachers get through the holidays. That help teachers be happy around the holidays because it's not fair for you to be grumpy because your kids aren't listening to you all the time. Like that's, that's not good. So these sanity savers are sanity savers for you as a teacher to kind of check yourself. You know, conscious discipline talks a lot about checking yourself, realizing where you are mentally because if you are not completely right mentally because you're tired, you're tired of teaching a class that won't listen to you around the holidays, you're, you're gonna, it's just gonna be like a negative thing, right? So you need a break, your kids need a break, and these are some of my sanity savers that I love to do every time of year, so I am so excited to share them with you today. The very first thing that I wanna say before I get into my sanity savers is the biggest thing that I feel like I wasn't doing my first year of teaching and that it took some time for me to kind of realize that you have to read your class. And what, you know, what do I mean by reading your class? Well, you have to read the, the climate of your class. You have to realize what is necessary and what is right. Morning time's normally like totally fine, right? It's the afternoons is when you like completely lose them. So say I have a math lesson in the afternoon and I sit down to do it and you've got all of their attention or 95% of their attention for five minutes. I mean, guys, that's literally what's happening right now is I have all of them for at least five minutes and then I start losing them one by one by one. If it's just a small group of kids, that's not losing your class. That's not them being bunkers. That's just those group of kiddos that are really struggling right now. But if it's more than half of your class that they are just like so not listening to you, I'm not going to press the lesson even further. I might finish my lesson out a little bit or cut it really short. Me realizing that they are just mentally tired and need a break, I'm going to stop because I realize that they're not listening. But the biggest thing is, is I'm not going to tell them, guys, you're not even listening to me. I'm not going to teach anymore <laughs> because it's hard. Like you got to remember being six and seven years old or whatever grade you teach um, this time of year. And it snowed today. So it's just, it's just one of those things where you have to you gotta just try and remember what it's like to be a kid this time of year. So read your class, realize what's happening, and then you can do some of these sanity savers. So don't feel like you have to get that math lesson in at that moment in time. Maybe just tell them, guys, I think, I think we might need a brain break to proceed in this math lesson. That's what I told my kids today. I said, guys, <laughs> I can tell that we're very unfocused. It's okay 
not a big deal. I'm a little excited about this note too. Realize that, you know, tell them that it's okay to be unfocused for something because if you always tell them that it's a bad thing to be unfocused, you're you're gonna lose them. And that's at least that's my opinion. You know, they're gonna you're they're gonna lose their respect for you because they're not allowed to be excited for snow or they're not allowed to be excited for your classroom elf or anything like that. So I don't want to lose the magic and I don't want to lose respect and I don't want to forget that they're six years old, okay? <laughs> I do I, and sometimes that happens I still do it you know but I just trying to check myself realize they're six it's December it's snowing you know so me reading my class I'm like okay this isn't fair like me teaching this lesson right now trying to get their attention and focus isn't fair so I'm gonna say we're super unfocused that's okay it looks like we need a little bit of a mental brain break. We're gonna do something to kind of get us back on track and I think we'll be more ready for your lesson this time. And normally when you tell them that, then they'll be like, okay, like that's fine. And you're also teaching them, they don't feel like they're in trouble for being unfocused, if that makes sense. Like I feel like they're more like, okay, it's Mrs. Peter says it's okay for me to be unfocused, but I guess I need to do something to get back on track so we can listen type of thing. So. Here are my things that I love to do whenever things like this happen. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at my curriculum, look at my week, and see if this lesson can be moved back a day. And I might do that lesson in the morning, you know? Like try and flip flop my days a little bit, flip flop my reading lessons and math, maybe do math in the morning. See if I can be flexible. If your school allows that, if they're flexible enough for that. If not, then maybe you can stop for a brain break. And so these are my favorite, favorite brain breaks to do. So my first little brain break, I guess tip number two is Go Noodle. So I think a lot of people use Go Noodle, right? It's like the best thing ever. If you haven't heard Go Noodle, you guys are missing out. I, I will put all of these little sanity savers down below for you so you can have this nice big long list. Go Noodle is a fantastic online video dancing situation like it's fantastic like you have to go check it out it's free for teachers you can sign up and it will give you like this little champ and you earn your champ grows with you and gets bigger and stronger and stronger and they are always making more what's great about go noodle is some of them are educational so sometimes you can pull that up and have the kids count by twos i love that one or counting by fives and tens they have some educational ones, they have some just for fun ones. A lot of the things are um, crossing the midline. So guys, if you, school's really big on, um, especially if a kiddo's really lacking in fine motor skills or gross motor, um, which is just like tactile, like holding a pencil and you know balancing on one foot. And if they're having problems with that, sometimes they have an attention focus too. So a lot of this stuff is like crossing the midline where they, you know, you have like this midline in between your body, right? And they say, if you have a hard time like taking one hand and hitting it to your opposite knee then some of those kiddos do not have practice in that and that can hinder their attention that can hinder their gross motor skills and being able to run and jump and skip it could affect the way they hold a pencil or write sometimes they start writing in the middle of the page like all of these things are because they don't have a good midline muscle I, that's not really a muscle but you guys know what i'm saying like it's 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 in the brain somewhere i'm not scientific so i'm just saying what i've learned noodle is a really really good website that does a lot of crossing the midline activities and can really help Help your kiddos and they think they're dancing and singing right but you know better and you know that it's going to make them better now a good tip that I have with go noodle is uh, before you start it sometimes you know teachers say like well it makes my class even crazier well tell them you know shut the lights off come to the carpet and say okay we're gonna do a go noodle um, because our brains exercise our, our bodies need to move because when our bodies move our brains are a lot more focused and happy afterwards whenever you're tired and exhausted it helps you focus a lot better so after the brain break tell them what you expect after the brain break as soon as the videos over or whatever that usually comes up with like this little go doodle thing kids know as soon as they see that or as soon as it's ready for me to hit the X, they know to put a bubble in and go straight to the carpet. And we just we just practice that. So you can practice that before you do the go noodle. And that really helps whenever the it's done. The kids are the kids know what is expected of you. They know that they need to be in control or else go noodle's not working type of thing. Okay, enough about go noodle because I feel like the whole world is doing it. But if you're not, please check into it. It's fantastic. Along with go noodle, um, something else that you could do is art for kids hub. So that really helps with the fine motor skills too. 
and art for kids hub is a youtube channel again i'll link leave this down below and all he does is draw and they are five you can find three minute videos five minute videos there are even like 30 minute videos which is crazy but he is obviously his youtube channel and he draws with kids and it is a great 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 resource we do art for kids hub all the flipping time we did rudolph today and it was it was it was perfect but it's just a great way for them to get silent like guys they're like silent when that happens sorry my husband's home and his truck is beeping and i'm really really surprised that lazy's not barking <laughs> So Art for Kids Hub is a really, really great way. Just have the kids say, guys, let's let's just let's stop with our brains for a second. Let's do something quiet. It's a really good like after recess thing if you need them to kind of quiet down and chill. Pop on an Art for Kids Hub. They absolutely love it. A lot of the kids are like, I've done that one at home, and they get all excited about it. That is a really, really good one too. We do that probably one daily from here on out until December. And that's just a really great way for them to kind of like relax and get ready for the next thing. But again, tell them that this is why we are doing this. We're not just pulling this up because I don't want to teach anything. Pulling it up because our brains kind of need help focusing a little bit. And so if you're focusing on this Art for Kids Hub video and drawing and practicing your fine motor skills, then you might be ready for math time or reading time or writing time. Another thing that's great is Mystery Doug. Mystery Doug is a guy that answers science questions that kids have all over the world. You can submit a question and they say like what grade you're in and he contacts you and they do like this little video and he answers all these questions. So he answers literally like the best questions ever. He answers why do the leaves change color in the fall? Why do we have turkey at Thanksgiving? He answers literally everything and it comes out every single week. So we usually have Mystery Doug Wednesdays. I do it just like in this really weird part of the day where it's just like we've packed up but we have like 10 minutes left so we usually put on a mystery Doug but the kids get so excited because it's such a novelty we only do it once a week so doing mystery Doug more often this time of year so you can watch like old ones from years past they get so so excited so that's another good way to get them to learn something get them engaged because it's only like six minutes so it's not like you're throwing on a movie um, and they love it they learn a lot from him and they it helps it really teaches them to be inquisitive thinkers like this group is they are such inquisitive thinkers and they ask great questions that I never know answers for as little scientists uh, because of Mystery Doug. So I have that to think. So definitely check out Mystery Doug as well. Those are the big ones that I like to do for sanity savers. Another thing that I, another few things that I like to do are mystery pictures. Mystery pictures are fantastic, at least for first grade, because they're still trying to find like all of the numbers. They're trying to remember where all the numbers are on the number grid. They're just trying to navigate the numbers. So we do a mystery picture every single week, especially around the holidays. Also like to do uh, color by code pictures. Those can get them to kind of chill out, but also learning things or practicing math facts or sight words or whatever. Honestly, the biggest thing, and you don't even need to like get anything out for this, but have them just do read. Like my kids absolutely love to do read to self. So sometimes I just say, guys, I think we just need to grab a book and chill for a second. And they love it. They get so excited about it. Now I know that that was a learned thing, the stamina and have built it up. So my kids really, really love reading. Um, and that has been my job since the beginning of the year is to teach them the love of reading. And my kids really enjoy doing it, but maybe your kids love to write, or maybe your kids love to, I don't know, do STEM activities. Every kid loves to do STEM activities. Find something that they love to do and say, let's just do this for like 10 minutes to get our, you know, reel ourselves back in and so we can finish out our day. I hope you guys enjoyed these sanity saver tips. Keep your positive classroom climate and just do these fun little sanity savers and reel your class back in. But the biggest thing is that you're telling them that we are stopping our lesson to come back to it. Like we still have to do this, right? Like we're not just like tossing it out the window. We are doing something to kind of help our minds focus and you can tell them like adults sometimes need focus time too. It helps them realize that what they're doing is human and it's okay to be unfocused sometimes, but you've got to do stuff to reel it back in. By doing these things, you're really teaching them how to refocus yourself um, or redirect yourself as an adult. And it's going to be things that they can take on with them throughout you know, their entire life. You're teaching them a lifetime skill. It's to try and keep that classroom positive climate for the rest of the year. Don't make it a stressful situation. I know that's easier said than done. If you enjoyed these sanity savers, please give this video a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm definitely taking my own advice from here on out 
and doing these probably more often throughout the day. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you are notified whenever I post a new video. And other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.